is Hollywood. It's a town like any other town. There may be a few more pretty girls because of the pull of motion picture studios, but otherwise, just another American town. Overcrowded, too much traffic, a main street full of the same kind of sucker traps, and men of every possible assortment. Honest men, fools, clergymen, businessmen, tramps. And this is Steve Randall, who knows Hollywood like the palm of his hand. For Steve Randall, in his own way, is a composite of Hollywood. He's seen everything a man can see anywhere, and has been disillusioned by most of it. And he belongs in Hollywood, for its fame and its so-called glamour are magnets for the money-hungry riffraff of the outside world. And they bring their greed to Steve Randall's town, and greed's companion is trouble. And that's fine for Steve Randall, for trouble is his business. Pay suicide, the studio lawyer, murder. So you get 25 bucks a day and give them the right answer, maybe. Be a nice day on the beach today, but suicides or murders don't take weather into consideration. Neither is an investigator supposed to. Well, here we go again. Poor Gloria Terry. She had everything, talent, money, even beauty. Except a good interior decorator. People who don't keep their things in order should be killed. This one was, wasn't she? <laughs> Nonsense. Gloria killed herself. After all, you can't force a person to swallow 20 Embutols. You could if you slipped her an Embutol concentrate. That'd kill her, and the doctors would never know the difference. Neither would she if she took a single capsule just because she wanted to go to sleep. Are you a doctor? The name's Steve Randall, investigator. And what are you investigating, Mr. Randall? Among other things, this. <laughs> now, now you're wrong. I'm Walter Brooks, Gloria's husband. Uh, sort of. Estranged, I think, is the term the newspapers use. Luckily, Gloria forgot to change her will. Didn't expect to die, I guess. Most people who commit suicide usually do. Hmm. I forgot. What makes you so sure your wife killed herself, Mr. Brooks? Movie stars don't have anything to worry about, except taxes, maybe. Yeah, and the kind of life they lead. Look, look, there's not one attractive bachelor in Hollywood who wasn't a member of the club. Love, Eric. To my dream girl, John. Forever, Andre. You know, I'm not precisely a moral crusader. But when a girl leads the kind of life that Gloria has... I wouldn't say that this fellow's very attractive. George Valdan thinks he is. And he employs a high-priced publicity staff to let his admiring public know what the great director looks like. Well, I may not like his face, but I like the pictures he makes. You don't have to take bicarbonate after one of his films. To the brightest star in my crown. Do women still go for that garbage? Are you referring to women or to Hollywood actresses? Yeah, they may look the same, but it's an optical illusion. Take my advice, Mr. Inspector, and keep your hands off of actresses. I don't know. The way some of them are carved, I wouldn't mind. Uh, that is, if they'd let me. But neither did you. Did you? A guy could become rich overnight selling popcorn with Nebutol flavoring around Hollywood studios. They work twice as hard falling asleep than keeping awake. Well, here he comes now. Let's hope for the best. All right, we're expecting you. What's that best you're hoping for, Mr. Counselor? Do you by any chance recall just why Mr. Malloy made me hire you? Yeah, faintly. I was to prove, if possible, that Gloria Terry did not commit suicide. Well? Well, I got nothing from the house. According to Captain Jackson's report, it's still sleeping pills. Now tell us what's in the report. We get it. Well, here goes two hundred thousand dollars. The insurance. As usual, before starting a picture, Jack insures the star. 
Unfortunately, the policy excludes suicide. But it pays off in case of murder, huh? Yes. Yeah. Huh? I'll put him on. What a happy twosome they'd be if poor Gloria had been murdered. Save your breath, Sam. The answer's no. I can't pay that kind of dough. Ruth Windermere's agent. Well, don't you want Ruth for the part? Sure, sure. She'd be the best after Gloria, but he knows the squeeze I'm in and does his own squeezing. Now, the terms he asks are out of the question. Ruth Windermere, isn't she the dame that staged that hair-pulling contest at the Trocadero with uh, Gloria Terry, the deceased? Yes, Ruth wanted the part, got mad because Gloria got it. I'd talk to Ruth herself, or let the director do it. No actress is in a position to turn down a picture with Valdan. Is Valdan directing this picture? Hmm. Yes. Why? Well, I understood that Gloria was a star in his crumb. Oh, you're way behind the times. That was years ago. There were many other stars since. Oh, I see. An astronomer with a flair for variety. Well, every man has his weakness, haven't you? Sure. Mine is insatiable curiosity. You mind if I go feed the monster? <laughs> I guess people like Valdan live up in the Hollywood Hills so they can look down on the riffraff who pay to see their pictures. Mr. Votan, no hope. Don't Help! Help! just socked your butler. I'm allergic to being detained when a lady screams for help. Your acting must be improving, my dear. The gentleman thought you really were in danger. Oh, gee, was I really that good? And only the second rehearsal. Well, this is one story I want my grandchildren. George Valdan never fails to create reality. I apologize humbly and shamefaced for breaking into your rehearsal. Before my butler shows you the way out, I would like to know what brought you here. The death of Gloria Terry. The name's Steve Randall, investigator. I've heard of you. Too bad, wasn't it? Maybe I can help you. Thanks. Sorry, Mr. Valdan. It's getting late and we're having a rehearsal this afternoon. I'll see you after the rehearsal. My car will be waiting for you. Nah, it'd be fun going to the theater tonight and taking the spark plugs out of his Rolls Royce. Well, how do you like my discovery? I saw her last night at the little theater. A genius of an actress among a flock of dilettantes. She will be the brightest star in my crown. Well, I'm sorry to point out a flaw in your memory, Mr. Valdan, but uh, you didn't discover Lucy last night. I beg your pardon. No, on Sunday, the little theater's closed. Today's Monday. Deplorable, isn't it? What are you, Investigator Randall? Gloria's death or my friendship with Lucy? I'm sorry I let myself drift, but I investigate leisure also. You were a friend of Gloria's, too, weren't you? I know what you're thinking, but I'm callous because I show no grief. Well, that'd be an understatement. Death for me is just a part of life. My life is my work. Glorious tragedy might have interfered with my name if I'd not discovered Lucy. Never mind where and when I discovered her. She will be superb in that part. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Well, I hate to puncture your pipe dream, but... Uh... I understand your protege isn't going to play the part. Who else? I heard Malloy mention Ruth Windermere. Ruth. That can be taken care of. Where did 
I read about the species of rattlesnakes that don't rattle. They murmur. Malloy speaking. Jack, I've just heard a joke, a rather poor one. Someone just told me that that unlovely, ungifted cow, Ruth Windermere, is going to play in my picture. Please, George, don't make my life still more miserable. I'll be happy if I can get her. I haven't even signed her yet. That would make me most unhappy. Doesn't that count? Well, if you feel that way, George, there's only one thing you can do. I hate to say it. But what would that be? Someone else will have to direct the picture. I'm sorry. Doesn't like Ruth Windermere. Nice chunk of woman. Why? Maybe she's allergic to his milky way. When you can't know till you ask her, Randall, and in the passing, she might even tell you why she loved Gloria Terry so much. Or if the hair pulling was just a publicity stunt. said hospitality is a lost art in Hollywood. Miss Windermere, I'm... Now, stop boring me with protocol. You look like a guy who could dance. How about it? Well, what did you do that for? So I can hear you when you tell me what we're celebrating. Okay. First, the contract that I just signed with Malloy Productions. And secondly, the event that made it possible, huh? Gloria's accident? You're a clairvoyant. I guess you weren't exactly in love with her. I've hated her ever since I came to Hollywood. Every part I wanted, or every bow, she snatched it away from me. Now I'm getting even. It's in both ways. Does Valdan agree to have you in his picture? Oh, who cares? That meatball likes to play hard to get, and he'll come around. You know why he doesn't like me? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the only girl in Hollywood who's never looked at his Japanese prints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose now you will. No, uh, nothing doing. Well, not if I can have you. You are cute. <laughs> Walter, meet my nice new friend. Sorry you have to leave, Randall. Walter, do you know what I'll do you if you're not nice to my friends? I won't marry you. Maybe I won't marry you. Well, it might interest you to know that I wouldn't marry you. Goodbye. Don't touch me, you beast! Keep your hands off actresses. That's what the man said. Two guys and a doll profiting on one dose of Nebutol. Walter Brooks, the estranged husband, gets the residue of the deceased. Walter Brooks, the estranged husband, gets the residue of the deceased. Nah, not enough guts. Malloy? If... Yes, if Mr. Randall gets the right answer. That makes him a question mark. Ruth Windermere. Plenty of temper. Could kill, but not the slow way. Yeah, too bad there isn't an actress around to put your hands on. At the sound of the gong, the time will be 9 p.m. Stay tuned for the latest news compiled by the Los Angeles Chronicle. We just received a flash, ladies and gentlemen. I'll read it to you as soon as it comes off the ticker tape from our news service. Ruth Windermere killed. Belden's second star meets death. Miss Windermere was driving on Wiltshire Boulevard when a truck ignoring the traffic lights came from a side street. Ruth's car overturned, bearing the actress under it while the truck sped away. The truck's license number was illegible. One woman never remembers the driver. He wasn't the truck driver type, she said, an intellectual looking man of 40. He wore glasses. And he wore glasses. Hello, 
Fellows, is Mr. Malloy there? Well, tell him Steve Randall will be right over. Was Ruth Windermere insured, too? You scared me. Now, sure she was. Why do you ask? Asking questions is part of my business. Talking about questions, who's going to play the part now? Well, unless a miracle happens, no one. Unlucky three, Hollywood's pet superstition. I better save my breath. What can you expect from females who wouldn't eat oysters on Friday for fear of choking on a pearl? I bet nobody even wants the part. Try this for size. I think Valdan's got a girl for you. Who? I got a hunch she's not the superstitious type. Who? Her name's Lucy. She's very pretty. I don't know anything about your racket, but I got a hunch she's a good little actress. I couldn't sign a newcomer if she were another Greta Garbo. The bank that finances my picture will insist on a star name. I'm not suggesting that you sign her. Just look her over. Well, why waste my time and hers? Well, with the $400,000 the insurance will pay, couldn't you just pick up the phone and say, hello, Mr. First National, I don't need you. I'll finance my own pictures. I don't like the way you said that, Randall. I'm the one who hired you, remember? Sure. I also remember you're paying me by the day. If you let me call Lucy and Valdan, maybe I can save you tomorrow's expense. Well, how do you figure that, Randall? A hunch. You gave me. Hollywood's pet superstition, the cycle, never two, always three. I want to see if this kid will play the third actress. Or if it'll be Valdan that'll talk her into it. Who do you think you are, Randall? A motion picture director? You're staging a scene, you don't even know what the actors will say. Maybe you're a talent scout who introduces rising stars to a star-less producer. Just a heel who's using a nice kid for a decoy. Jack, I'm proud to introduce to you the brightest star in his crown. My name is Lucy Leander. Well, you are pretty. Thank you, Mr. Malloy. Jack, what made you change your mind? Ruth Windermere was killed. Tonight. Accident? Well, I don't know. Too bad. One man's loss is another man's gain. Who told you about Lucy? I, uh, I told him about Lucy. When I love you for it, Mr. Randall. Lucy, please. Well, that's the first good news I've had today. Lucy, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Bodan. George. George. Good to know they're still at the Mr. and Miss stage. Well, Jack, is she in? Tomorrow we'll make a screen test of her. Then we'll see. Do you hear that, my dear? That means you are in. Oh, I hope you're right, Miss George. But I'm scared. I haven't any experience now. Oh, wake up, child. Is George Valdan you're talking to? The man who hasn't used a single actor of experience in his pictures when he made masterpieces like Dangerous. Men in hiding. You have to get your sleep. Yes, George. Thank you, Jack. Well, you've had your little scene. I wonder what it was, comedy or tragedy, and for whom? Me or the girl? You mind telling me what is your deduction? No answer yet. In other words, your hunch didn't pay off. Well, they don't always. You mind if I have another one? Everybody's getting rich on this killing. $400,000 is nothing to sneeze at. Malloy, Walter Brooks. He's getting glorious dough. All I get are lousy hunches. Wait a minute. 
Was it a bad hunch? What did he say? It's George Valdan you're talking to. The man who has never used an actor of experience in his pictures. He's made masterpieces like Dangerous Men in Hiding. Why didn't I think of that before? I'm not going to make a fool out of myself a second time. Hey, that's no rehearsal. That's a real McCoy. Hey, a little too realistic, aren't you, Valdez? What did you do this time? Murder, my butler? Now, luckily for him, he was in the pantry. I saw him when I was climbing up the trellis. At least you didn't kill her. Not that it matters. They can only hang a man once. As the old saying goes, you've seen too many motion pictures. Brother, you never said a truer word. I can remember that one as if I saw it yesterday. It was about a repulsive reprobate, crazy with passion for a young girl. Taking advantage of her burning ambition, he tricked her into a promise. No woman would choose me for my appearance. But neither do they hang you for being a man. Dangerous. That was a masterpiece. I'll never forget the ingenious way the girl was murdered with Nebutal concentrate. The police had to believe it was suicide. But I like men in hiding even better than dangerous. But that hit and run murder scene wasn't worthy of you, Valdan. You could have done better. As a matter of fact, you could have done better altogether. There are easier ways to get rid of actresses than murder. You didn't have to kill them to get Lucy the part. But the trouble with you is you like murder. Your crime pieces are masterful because you're a look like suicide. Quite right. There's an excellent motive for suicide, too. You're disbarred. Vengeance. Boy, that scene was in the picture and how realistically I played it. You're a good director, Val Dan. You all right, Lucy? Yes. I, I guess so. Oh, don't worry. There won't be any more realistic scenes to be enacted. I think Mr. Valdan has resigned from the world of art. Please, Mr. Randall, could you take me home now? Sure, sure. I'll take you home, Lucy. Wait till I telephone the police. <laughs> <laughs> 